In this video, we're going to see how to set up and use a custom USB HID interface on an STM32 microcontroller, more precisely an STM32F103C8 microcontroller that I have in this board right here. In order to easily understand, we are, we are going to try and build a simple demo uh, which consists of a few IOs that are connected to the board I have here two buttons as inputs and four LEDs as outputs. We are going to control them with a simple GTK uh, interface with Python. Let me bring it up right now. Okay, first I'm gonna plug the, the board and then run the interface. And let me uh, scale window all right so we have here four toggle buttons and four indicators that corresponds to the four uh, LEDs that I have on the board and also two indicators that corresponds to the two buttons in here so if we click or toggle some of the buttons we can see that the lights or the LEDs turns on same goes for the blue red and green can turn them all at once or turn them off and also for the buttons if we click one of these buttons we can see that the indicator right here turns on as well same goes for the, the other one so uh, by the end of this video we're gonna see how we can build this so uh, before starting coding anything, let let us very briefly have a look at the USB interface and see how does it exactly works. So uh, each time uh, a USB HID device is connected to a host, in our case is a computer, the device is detected, and then the host requests uh, device descriptors. The device descriptor uh, contains information such as the vendor ID and product ID and other information as well. Once that is received, the host resets the device and assigns it an address. You can have up to 127 device or USB device connected to the host. Once that's done, uh, the host requests more descriptors such as the configuration descriptor and the interface descriptors that contains information about the features of that de uh, specific device and finally the appropriate driver is loaded for it and the device is ready to use the descriptors are actually structured as follow so we have the device descriptor and each device uh, descriptor can have multiple configurations but usually only one is used in most of the devices. The important thing to note that uh, you cannot use multiple configuration at the same time. Actually the host selects which configuration to use and then use it. And in each configuration you can have multiple interfaces. Uh, interfaces on the other hand can be used simultaneously and on each interface can have multiple endpoints. Endpoints are kind of buffers that are actually used to co for communication between the host and the device and the USB device and it can be either input or output. Uh, one thing to note that there is an endpoint 0 which is used uh, for communication between the host and the device during the uh, enumeration cycle. And so in our demo, we're going to be having one configuration in one interface in two endpoints, one as input and one as output. I'm going to be leaving links to two useful websites in the video description that contains all details about the USB descriptors and the USB interface uh, in general. So I really recommend having a look at it. Let us have now a look at the schematic of the demo that we will be building. There isn't much to it, so here we have only two buttons that are connected to PA4 and PA5. These two pins are pulled high by the microcontroller and four LEDs that are connected to the ground and to the microcontroller through 330 
ohm resistors. All right, let's fire up the SM32 IDE. Uh, I'm gonna start by creating a new SM32 project and then select uh, the microcontroller I have, it's the M32F103C8. Next, then I'm gonna create a new, I'm gonna set a, a name for the project, USB HID demo, maybe. Next, yes, okay. All right, uh, what I usually do is first I set the clock to use the external crystal and then in the system I'm gonna enable the SW trace and now let us set up the, the IO. So we have two buttons on PA4 and PA5. So I'm gonna set this one as input, this one as well as input. I'm gonna set the pull-up resistor to be, um, I mean I'm gonna set up the pull-up resistor and I'm gonna name it button left and this one pull-up and button right. Then I'm gonna set the LEDs, so this one as output I'm gonna name it LED white. Then uh, this one, I'm gonna set it to uh, next. I'm gonna enable the USB. So in uh, connectivity, USB, enable the full device, full speed device. And in middleware, we're gonna activate or enable the custom HID interface. Um, we'll have to set few parameters. First is the descriptor. This is the descriptor, uh, device descriptor we talked about. So you can find, you see here the vendor ID and the product ID. Uh, I usually, uh, change this one to another value than the default as sometimes it gets uh, interfered with the STM the ST link programmer so I make this one 62 and in here this is the HID report descriptor uh, we are not using this report this descriptor uh, but it's usually used for devices that are recognized by the operational system such as keyboard, mouses, and joysticks, etc. Um, I'm gonna set it to 3 for now and I'm gonna explain why later. And this is the size of the output report buffer. It's uh, by default set to 2, I'm gonna set it to 8. It can go up to 64. All right, uh, the last thing we need to fix is the clock. So um, I'm gonna let it automatically correct the values. And I'm gonna set the frequency to the maximum, which is 72 megahertz for this particular microcontroller. All right, I think that's all we have to do. So I'm going to save. All right, let's open the main file. And then let's us locate uh, the, the files that contain the different descriptors. So first, uh, let's look up for the um, device descriptor, which is which can be found in the USB device app and USB D descriptor. You can see here the different uh, values we set using the GUI. And if we go down towards the bottom, we can find the device descriptor. So this is the device descriptor. And again, I really recommend you checking the uh, links that I talked about so you can understand each value what represents. 
the more the more the most important ones for us right now are the USB the vendor ID and product ID which I already set and also the number of configuration this device have so it is by default set to one it's what it wants so we're gonna keep so we're gonna keep it as is next we're gonna look for the uh, the rest of the descriptor which are the configuration descriptor and the interface descriptor and the endpoint descriptor those can be find uh, found in um, in the middleware st stm32 class it custom hid source and this file right here usbd custom hid so i'm gonna open it and goes down a little bit and this is the 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 structure that contains the descriptors the first section here is the descriptor for the configuration uh, we can see here that it's uh, sets to have only one interface and next comes the interface descriptor which is again set to uh, have two endpoints and then comes the report descriptor um, this one that I said we are not going to use and that we set to three if you remember if you open this one we have to set the report size to be three and this represents the size of the report and this report can be found in the custom HID interface this file the, the .c file it's this one um, it has this counter by default but uh, we're gonna need to change it to to this so now it have three uh, three bytes and again as I said this one is used for devices that are need to be recognized by the host such as mouses and keyboards etc then let's go back to the reports and then comes the endpoint descriptors so we have two endpoints one is set as an input and the other one is set as the output so this field actually uh, sets the address for the endpoint and also sets the direction of the endpoint either it is an input or an output so so far everything seems okay all right so at this point we have uh, a detectable H usb hid device we can go ahead and compile and let's run this program i'm gonna create a new debugging uh, configuration i'm gonna plug in the uh, programmer then use specific st link scan for it select it apply and then ok so let's it compile once more and upload the code to the uh, device ok ok so I'm gonna resume the program perfect now let me open um, a terminal and let us look at the syslog of the of the system and again um forgot to mention that I'm on Ubuntu right now if you are in Windows you can check the device manager and it should be detected there so I'm gonna open the syslog and now I'm gonna plug in the USB cable of the from the board okay so we can see that the device was detected and this is the vendor ID and the product ID and also it was detected uh, as an HID device we can even lo lo look for more details using the lsusb command so I'm gonna use lsusb dot uh, slash or yeah minus v and here we can see the different devices among them is the, the interface we just created which is this one and you can see that we have one configuration and also one interface and this is the report descriptor 
and two endpoints. This is the first endpoint, which is an input endpoint, and the other one, which is an output endpoint. Okay, so now we can continue with uh, our program. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we're gonna include uh, this header. So I'm gonna add it right here, USBD custom hid.h and also we gonna uh, declare a variable and actually we're using it with the external value because we are gonna use a variable that is declared in another file so we if we can if we go to the origin of this this one if we can come on let me come Yeah, you know, this one, exactly this one. So we are actually referring to this variable in USB device that C. All right. Next, uh, we can go to our main loop. First, before that, I'm gonna declare one more variable which represents the buttons. So it's a buffer for our buttons, which is in two bytes. So each byte represents one of the button. If it is one, then it is uh, clicked. If zero, it's not clicked or pressed. Anyways, so here we're gonna add our code for uh, detecting the button press and then sending the buffer to the host. So I'm gonna copy paste to not waste much time. Okay. So we have two uh, conditions. We are detecting if I I there is a key press on either of the two buttons, either the right or the left. If so, we're gonna set the corresponding uh, byte to one. And also, I'm gonna set this one to be not pressed each on uh, each cycle of the loop. And finally, the most important function that we are going to use to send the data, which is HID, USB custom HID send report, which takes as parameter the USB device pulse speed that we have declared in here, and also the, the buffer and the size of it, which we have two bytes. And then we simply add a simple delay. Let's compile and see if we didn't miss anything. Oh boy. Okay, I think I forgot. What did I forget? What did I forget? What did I? Okay, I forget this character. All right, compile one more time. All right, so everything is good now. So this is the part for sending the data from the USB to the host. Now for the other part for receiving the data from the host to the device is a little bit complicated. So let's go right into it. The first thing to check is in file, um, one moment if I can recall where that was it's the dot H actually so we have here a, a structure declaration in here by default uh, the the code generator set it to use only two bytes but we have set it to eight if you remember you can even have it as uh, as far as 60 as the 64 bytes so for me i've set it to 8 which is more than enough for what we need um, so we're going to change this one to accept a buffer so we can send as much as we want so i'm going to change it back to buffer and uh, then we're going to have we're going to go to the c file dot c file in towards the bottom there is there are two functions that we need to 
change very slightly the first one is this one it's a custom hid data out which accepts only two bytes we need to change this one to accept a full buffer so we're gonna set it this way and the same thing goes for this function so I'm gonna remove this all right and then in the custom HID interface we will have a function towards the bottom which is this one so this function is fired up every time a message or data coming from the host to the device and we're gonna ch the change the declaration as well to accept a buffer instead of two bytes and also the uh, the the function prototype which should be in here I believe okay where is it exactly one moment yeah this one so we're gonna change the prototype function prototype to be a buffer as well now so so every time we receive uh, data from the host this function gets fired and the data that we sent will be in this variable so we're gonna set our code there I'm gonna copy paste one more time okay so what I'm doing here is only checking the first byte actually we're only using one byte in here and checking whether the first byte it has one has zero one or two or three and depending on this value we gonna toggle the specific pin so for example if the first byte was zero then we're gonna toggle the white LED and so on alright so I'm gonna go ahead and compile one more time and of course there is errors let me see yeah uh, I called it states I'm gonna have to change this one to buffer and compile one more time alright everything is good so I'm gonna go ahead and rebuild the project and upload it to the uh, board all right perfect I'm gonna see again if the device is still detected correctly so I'm gonna unplug it and plug it one more time all right nice let's uh, now check out the GTK uh, interface so the first thing we need to make sure that necessary libraries are installed the first one is PyUSB yeah, we can install it with pipe install PyUSB so I have it already installed this this library that's what I'm gonna use to actually uh, control the USB interface next we can need to make sure that our gtk library is installed with apt install python g i have it installed as well all right so let's now look at the actual uh, program i have it in let, me, let us first see the structure of the the folder so what i have in here is uh images that uh, indicate the state of an LED like the blue have two states on and off and same goes for the green red and and the rest of the LEDs and this is the program I'm gonna open it to you using uh, VI alright so uh, first we import the GTK interface or the GTK library and as well as the USB uh, library and here we make sure that we are using the version 3.0 of GTK library and also importing uh, the necessary uh, modules that we are gonna use in the or the, mo the, the components that we are going to use in our interface 
Next, we are going to actually look for the USB interface that we, or the USB device that we are going to be interacting with and that's using the product ID and the vendor ID. If the device is found, we can proceed with program, otherwise we raise an exception. This section is only used in case of the device is used by other, by other program. And in this line, uh, if you remember uh, at the beginning of the, the video, I said that uh, the host actually choose which configuration to use. Uh, and this is what uh, we do in this two lines first we look for the configuration with number one and then when we set it so we gonna use it here I'm only creating a buffer of two bytes that represents the first byte represents the LED or actually the, the yes the LED and the second byte the state of the LED and here I'm only creating a mapping dictionary to map between the the name and uh, the number All right so in this section here we are actually building the uh, the GTK interface so uh, I have prepared uh, an image that's gonna help us under better understand this so um, we have first uh, a table as a grid that have four columns and four rows and that we're gonna add to the class and where we're gonna attach different components to it later on uh, what I did here is actually creating four buttons in a, a dictionary and then connect each one uh, connect the events the toggle events to a function that I that it's called on button toggle that is down below we're gonna uh, see it later and I'm passing also the name of the button as parameter next um, this is the pixbuff actually in order to Im to import an image to an um, an image file to an image container we have to pass by pix buffers so this image illustrates what happens we first import the file into the pixbuff and then we can set the pixbuff into the image container and then finally the image into the grid or the table so this is what i've done here first i'm loading two images of the same so those those files i'm loading it using a custom function uh, what it does uh, simply is load the file, the on state file and the off state file, and then rescale them uh, to the correct size and then return them, them. So, what we end up here having is the two images for each uh, indicator. And finally, we uh, load the image container with the off state pixel buffer for each one and uh, here I'm simply attaching the different components to the, the, the table or to the grid so here I'm attaching the buttons and here I'm attaching the images and here the, the, the button indicator that are located in this uh, boxes and uh, in this line, we are what actually doing is creating a, a function that is called every hundred millisecond. The function is called do pulse, and in this function, we can actually be reading from the device so we can detect when the the button were pressed. So uh, all right. So getting image couple, we already seen that one. Now this is the on button toggle. So each time a button of the GTK interface got toggled, this function will be called. What it does in in here is simply see if the button was already active. Then we can actually turn it off. And turning off, I mean by um, loading the image that correspond to the name of the button with the uh, off state pixel buffer and also 
update the buffer that we're going to send to the device with the map uh, dictionary that I've created before. So we're going to end up with the number of the LED and the state of the LED. And finally, we are sending the, the buffer to the device. So this one is the address of the output endpoint of the USB device we talk about. So simply we are sending the buffer to this address of the, of the endpoint. This one is just a timeout. And this is, this is the function that is called every 100 millisecond. And what we do in it is we keep reading. So we read from the address of the in endpoint. And we're going to read two bytes because we are sending two bytes from the USB device and a uh, hundred millisecond timeout. And here only checking the first uh, byte. If it is zero, it means that the, the, the zero button is on. If it is one, then we, we'll, we actually load the appropriate PIX buffer into the correct image indicator. And the same goes for the other uh, button. And we must return true uh, to make sure that this function keep called every 100 millisecond. So that's all there is to it. Uh, it's uh, very simple. I'm gonna let's let's see it one more time in action. I'm gonna run the script, the Python script with the Python USB demo. And let me bring up the image, the feed of the actual device. And here we can actually turn on every buttons and also see if the buttons are clickable. Yes, they are. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna be ending the video right here as it's uh, turned out to be longer than I expected. I hope you find it useful and if you have any question, feel free to put them into the comment section and uh, see you in the next one. Bye.